Item number, SCP-8595, Level 1 Unrestricted, Containment Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures SCP-8595 is contained in a standard insect enclosure in Site-322's Wildlife Department. As SCP-8595 does not biologically differ from non-anomalous members of its species, standard temperature regulation and habitat construction have been implemented. SCP-8595 follows a strict diet and will refuse certain foods. See addenda for further information. Description SCP-8595 is an American cockroach, Periplaneta Americana, which believes itself to be a restaurant critic. SCP-8595 is sapient and sentient, but is not capable of speech. When presented with any consumable item and any method of writing, SCP-8595 will eat the item and write a review of it, the interior of the location where the item was eaten, the service, and the concept of the restaurant, combining these elements into a rating out of 5 stars. It is assumed that SCP-8595 either believes itself to be human or that cockroaches should be allowed to eat at restaurants, as seen by multiple complaints on its Yelp about it being run out of restaurants, long waits for seating, being ignored, having items thrown at it, or being sprayed with chemicals. The former is the likely scenario, as references to SCP-8595's insectoid form and the issues of being an insect and attempting to eat a human scientist meal are outright ignored or glossed over in its reviews. Addendum 8595.1 Feeding Attempts It was quickly discovered that SCP-8595 would not consume the feed it was given in its enclosure, dubbing it Gutter Swill in a review. While non-anomalous cockroaches can live approximately 30 days without food, it was unknown if this still applied to SCP-8595, given its anomalous state. The loss of SCP-8595 in this way would be considered a breach of Foundation protocol. As a result, Site-322 organized the creation of Cafe 322, a restaurant made solely to convince SCP-8595 to eat. Item: A Fresh Granny Smith Apple Result after being presented with the apple, SCP-8595 crawled along its surface for 15 seconds before beginning to eat. It then wrote the following review on a nearby laptop. Cafe 322. A mess. Would you be impressed by a soccer player bragging about their kicking ability? <laughs> no, I wouldn't think so. Being able to kick a ball is below the bar I expect from a professional athlete. A restaurant announcing its use of fresh ingredients conjures similar feelings in me. At Cafe 322, that thought of, okay, what else, remains lingering throughout the dining experience. Cafe 322's idea of fine dining follows along the lines of a less is more concept. Constraint is the boon of creativity, and I can appreciate when an artist can operate within cramped walls and create something beautiful despite it. Cafe 322's understanding of the less is more concept led them to drab, blank walls, a cold, artless metal table, uniforms that invoke the feeling of being at your 9 to 5, and blinding hospital lights. I was lucky enough to be offered the chef's tasting menu. Imagine my rage and dismay when I was presented with a single green apple on a white plastic plate. Between the time it took for the server to walk this course from the kitchen to my table, the apple fell to its side and was disgustingly placed back upright by said server. I'm left at a crossroads. I can continue with this review, relaying the taste of an apple all of you have eaten in one form or another during your lives. Or I can do what Cafe 322 did and stop trying before I even started. After this sentence, it should be clear which road I went down. One out of five stars. Despite being told Cafe 322 listened to its critique, SCP-8595 refused to consume any meal produced by the restaurant out of principle and resumed its hunger strike. Foundation researchers transformed an unoccupied dorm in one of Site-322's sublevels into a concept restaurant inspired by minimalism entitled Mall. Items 
crisp tortilla with powdered Oaxaca cheese and spices. Footnote 1. Nacho cheese flavored Doritos arranged in a circular pattern. Deconstructed BLT. Footnote 2. A leaf of lettuce, a slice of bacon, a slice of tomato, and four Ritz crackers served in separate bowls. And dessert eggs. Footnote 3. Various Jelly Belly branded jelly beans placed on the rim of a plate. Result. SCP-8595 was given each item one at a time and consumed parts of each while taking notes in between courses. Malicious. What I have always enjoyed about the art form, yes, art form, of culinary expression is how a chef, owner, etc., can imbue themselves into a product and give their patrons a sense of who they are. Mal does no such things, taking minimalism to its extreme, to the point I'm unsure of what the artists behind this work are trying to make me feel. Black windowless walls, cold ice white marble tables, uncomfortable metal ceiling, and deliberately boring plating left me feeling I entered more the uncanny valley than I did a high-end restaurant. Mal offers a seasonal chef's menu, which I attempted to indulge in. The first course, a twist on nachos, as it was described to me, was tortilla triangles, fried and seasoned with a spice mix. The chips were cold as if they had never touched oil, but punched me with a lot of flavor. This was my favorite dish, specifically for the odd blue seasoning a few chips had sprinkled on them. Footnote 4. Mold. These were few and far between, but the flavor of this blue seasoning was absolutely delicious. I would eat a bowl of this alone. The deconstructed bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich bored me. I'm at a loss because I'm sure everyone here has had a BLT in their lives, and it's arguably a perfect sandwich. Mal, in its desire to conquer God, reinvented this perfect sandwich and made it a hassle to eat properly. These two dishes display my most glaring qualm. I do not mind eating with my hands, however, there should be a reason. I could have very easily been presented with a BLT, but no. That wasn't different enough. The dessert eggs were an interesting idea, but were executed poorly. I've never been a fan of molecular gastronomy. I was once presented with small caviar-sized orbs of a red liquid in a bowl and was told it was tomato soup. These dessert eggs were flavorless, tasting more of sweetness than anything else. When I asked my waiter what the flavors were, the eggs were in all different colors and had no discernible theme or pattern. She picked one up, smooshed it between her fingers, smelled it, told me buttered popcorn, and then ate it herself. Footnote 5. This is an exaggeration. As the plate was being delivered, one of the jelly beans rolled off and was caught by researcher Julianne Hoover, who ate it. That level of care told me all I needed to know of Mal. Good ideas and some good flavors, but bad execution. Two out of five stars. SCP-8595 again entered a hunger strike, refusing to try the new chef's menu at Mal, retry Cafe 322, or eat its foundation-supplied sustenance. This continued for three days. After discussing with Overwatch Command, researchers were given carte blanche on SCP-8595's containment. Under a Foundation front company, Site-322 recruited a Michelin-starred chef to create and prep a three-course meal. A sub-basement floor was torn down and reconstructed into Red Bell, with oversight from three Foundation interior designers. The space was crafted to resemble a high-end American steakhouse, with custom-made wooden paneling on the walls, a full bar, hand-built tables, and imported cutlery. Researchers Julianne and Julian Hoover were trained to be servers and were given formal uniforms. Items Beef tartare served with bell pepper slaw, jalapeno spears, raw egg yolk, capers, beef bone marrow, and crostini. 
a Wagyu tasting, consisting of three thin and seared pieces of Japanese A5 Wagyu, Australian Wagyu, and Kobe beef with a wasabi crema. Prime rib topped with lobster meat accompanied by Yukon gold mash, beef and lobster au jus, and truffle mac and cheese. Result. SCP-8595 was given each course and a wine pairing. In between each course, SCP-8595 took notes on a provided laptop. While attempting to drink the wine paired with its first course, SCP-8595 fell into the cup and had to be fished out by waitstaff. Red Bell, Red Flag if you've been a reader of mine for any length of time, you'll know minimalism or the less is more concept has never been my favorite school of thought. I can most definitely commend when a chef works within self-imposed constraints to give their guests the best time, and I have enjoyed minimalist restaurants. Red Bell is a maximalist restaurant. Everything in Red Bell from the waitstaff to the tables, from the bar to the plates my meals were served on, kicked and screamed of the need to be taken seriously. It was almost too perfect that I began questioning if I was in fact in a real restaurant. Describe a high-end steakhouse to your friend who's never heard of restaurants before, and then have that friend tell an alien that same information. What the alien creates will not be too dissimilar to what Red Bell I was presented with. The beef tartare was chewy, and with every chew I was reminded that I was eating a dead animal. The bell pepper slaw was a tasty addition, but I expected to see more bell pepper from a restaurant named Red Bell. This is the only time you'll see any bell pepper on any dish. The wagyu tasting was, of course, good. It's Wagyu. It's the best steak you can get in the world. The insultingly small rectangles of meat I was given were cooked to a nearly perfect medium rare. I will not give a steak restaurant their accommodation for serving me the best meat in the world and respect myself as a critic afterward. I can buy Wagyu from a butcher and cook it just as well, and it would taste just as good. If this restaurant sold only their sauces, they'd receive five stars from me. The wasabi cremera was a treat that cut through the fattiness of the wagyu, though slightly muted in flavor. The monstrous prime rib meal displays every single issue I have with Red Bell and is the antithesis of fine dining condensed down into a singular course. This entire meal was as if they went to the streets of the Las Vegas Strip and asked the drunken men and their plastic surgery riddled wives what they just spent $5,000 on in some gaudy overpriced embarrassment of a restaurant. Who in their right mind puts lobster meat on a prime rib? Who in their right mind serves rich buttery mashed potatoes with rich buttery trafel mac and cheese? Everything on that plate by itself was good, maybe even great. The Ajou, of course, was the star. I cannot, in good conscience, and as someone who respects the culinary arts, recommend anyone partake in this sham of a restaurant. Zero out of five stars. SCP-8595 resumed its hunger strike, refusing to eat at any of the above restaurants despite protestations and attempts to reason with it from researchers. Another meeting with Overwatch Command was held, and new restaurant ideas were floated, but it was assumed that the Foundation's efforts would be in vain. After the data from all of SCP-8595's reviews were compiled, a pattern was established, and a new and likely final restaurant was organized. Carpage. Item. Site-322's dumpster was moved indoors and placed in an empty supply closet. Result. SCP-8595 was laid inside, re-emerging after 2 hours and 19 minutes. Carpage. Scrumptious. Five out of five stars.
Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing for more videos just like this. Huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon and a special shout out to Everborn, Joe Light, Tanis, Ruler of All, Kenway, and Doomsday LLC, Prince, and Design. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out my Patreon. Link in the description.